there was ever a symbol of resilience and rebirth, it is this. These are pictures just coming into CNN from Paris. The Archbishop of Paris has been celebrating this exceptional Good Friday ceremony inside. Yes, this is the very bruised inside of the Notre Dame Cathedral. Père, Beautiful. So in a few hours, Pope Francis will be leading millions in prayer as Christians around the world observe Good Friday. For a lot of them, going to church will not be an option, and it shouldn't be an option because of the pandemic. Concerns about the coronavirus, also why the traditional washing of the feet on Holy Thursday didn't happen at the Vatican. The practice is something they believe Jesus did before he was crucified. Meanwhile, in the UK, Anglican services have also had to adapt this Easter. The former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, joins me now live from Cambridge in the UK. He's also the Master of Magdalen College in Cambridge. Uh, and and I, I thank you for joining us, sir, because Easter is just so different this year. So many Christians around the world are grieving uh, or scared or under lockdown. So how are you celebrating? It's been quite a steep learning curve, to be honest, Robin. We've all had to learn how to operate digital platforms in a new way, create communities online in a new way. And I have to say, it hasn't all been loss. My sense, having taken part in some of these digital connections, is that there's a real intimacy to them, there's a real sense of seriousness. Mm -hmm. And many people, more people actually, than habitually come to church seem to be signing up for online worship and online discussion as well, as if this is giving them permission to be a bit more serious, a bit more intimate with each other about their spiritual needs and the crisis that they face. Well, so I think a lot of entirely people... Yeah, I think a lot of people are asking questions, but because you are alone and, and isolation and solitude often uh, create those questions within yourself. I, I mean, Easter itself is something that not a lot, you know, many people don't celebrate. But even if you're not Christian, it, 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 the narrative of sacrifice and then hopefully rebirth is very relevant at the moment, isn't it? It couldn't be more relevant. It's, of course, a story about how at the very depth of abandonment, loneliness, and so forth in the story of Jesus driven out of his his city executed publicly, how even in that, the presence of an undefeatable love is still real. And whatever particular religious commitment you have, the sense that there's something held and something precious, that's so, so important here, and particularly for those on their own. Yeah. But I think also, if I can just add one other dimension in that, there are, of course, Christians in the world who habitually have to meet secretly privately christians for whom actually worshiping together is a real risk in countries where there's persecution mm. i think this is perhaps an opportunity for those of us who are christians in the west or the north of the world to think a bit about them and almost to give thanks that we have just a chance of sharing something with them and praying for them that little bit more intensely and, and I think you, you also referenced that there, there's been huge lessons and ex, an exposure perhaps of inequality. People complain about being locked down in their house for weeks on end, but that's a luxury in many ways. Uh, some, mm. some really hard lessons are being learned about equality, e inequality, even in places like the US or where you are in the UK. I think that's right. And of course, it's a global question too, because once the pandemic really gets a hold on fragile economies in Africa, say, yeah. The impact is far greater than it would be here. So I think in addition to what we're thinking about in terms of repurposing and restarting our own economies, we have to be thinking about how we, we create more safety nets for economies which could be in meltdown because of this in a month or two's time. And in a world like ours, where the fragility of an economy in Africa is going to impact on ours sooner or later, it is everybody's business, not just something that's happening to people far away. No, you make a good point there, because in many ways this is such a shared crisis, isn't it? And it, it's, it's about individual sacrifice for the communal good. And that's a real moral and spiritual lesson, no matter where you come on that one. It's a huge lesson to be learned. It's a reminder that if the world really is going to be sustainable, inhabitable, and just for the majority of human beings, then we can't simply take for granted that our own agenda, whether as individuals or even as societies, simply sets the pace for everybody. Everyone has to spec step back a bit 
in order to give breathing space to the neighbor. We know this, it's common sense in our ordinary relationships. And yet it seems so difficult sometimes to, to see society, let alone global society, in that light. Yet if others are to live, we need to step back. And stepping back into the kind of isolation so many of us are experiencing at the moment mm -hmm. as a sign of, well, giving room, giving space to others, literally helping to give breathing space to others, that's, to my mind, a powerful symbol of how we ought to be thinking about a working society, a just society. You're also the master of Magdalen College, Cambridge. I'm an alumni of that fantastic college, and I know that many of the students uh, and students across the world have struggled uh, with this as well. What are young people saying to you about, about uh, and are you learning anything from them, or what message are you giving them? It's certainly a very difficult time for students, especially students who are meant to be graduating this year. Yeah. The, the prospect of a final term before their final examinations, when they can say a proper goodbye to their friends, when they can celebrate their achievement, that's all vanished. And I think one of the, one of the messages I'd want to give is, look, the work you've done is worthwhile. The relationships you've built are worthwhile. There will be a chance to celebrate after this. For now, take each day as it comes. And above all, find the things that are feeding your spirit. Keep in touch with one another. Share your work, your leisure, as you've been used to do. There are ways of doing it. There are plenty of electronic means of communication. And try and try and remember that worthwhileness, the worthwhileness of who you are, what you've done, who your friends are. And that will carry you through. But it's a challenge for them, it really is. And the complications of keeping in touch with the college, keeping a regular flow of communication, they're, they're quite considerable. Yeah, and as, as you think to Sunday and beyond, um, what is your message to the world? You're the former Archbishop of Canterbury. You've had to provide solace and, and support to many people over the years. Is slowing down, contemplation, isolation a good thing for the moment? How do you find the positive in that? Well, I think, as we've already said, it's important yeah. not to be too sentimental about this because there are plenty of people whom <laughs> contemplation isn't exactly an option. They're no. worried about their jobs and their future, and that's, that's an urgent thing. But for those of us who do have the space given by this, for whom isolation is not going to be the end of the world, it really is a chance to step back and say, well, what makes me human? What really needs to be nourished my humanity? Do I depend on my freedom to travel, my freedom to acquire, my freedom to, su to succeed? Or is there something deeper than that? Because realizing that gives us a freedom which we need in order to create a more equal and a more, well, a more joyful society at the end of the day. Rowan Williams, former Archbishop of Canterbury, the Master of Magdalen College, Cambridge, thank you very much for joining us. Happy Easter, sir. Thank you, Robin. You're watching CNN. We'll have more after.